white supremacist, neo-Nazi, mass murderer. While bold of me to make these claims in the first 10 seconds of a YouTube video, it is similarly shocking that these are the names given to Dylan Storm Roof in the first sentence of his Wikipedia article. During a Bible study at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, Roof killed nine people, all African Americans, including senior pastor and state senator Clementa C. Pickney, and injured one other person. After several people identified Roof as the main suspect, he became the center of a manhunt that ended the morning after the shooting with his arrest in Shelby, North Carolina. He later confessed that he committed the shooting in hopes of igniting a race war, according to the New York Times. This is also seen in his confession. Roof's actions in Charleston have been widely described as domestic terrorism, according to multiple sources such as CBS and the Harvard Journal of Legislation. Roof had a website that he created that detailed white supremacist rhetoric and neo-Nazism, including photos and an entire manifesto. On December 15, 2016, Roof was convicted in federal court of all 33 federal charges, including hate crimes, against him stemming from the shooting. On January 11, 2017, he was sentenced to death for these crimes. Dylan Roof is the first person in U.S. history to have faced both a state and federal death penalty at the same time. In September 2015, it was announced Roof would face capital punishment in his state prosecution, and in May 2016, the U.S. Department of Justice announced Roof would face capital punishment in his federal prosecution as well. On March 31, 2017, Roof agreed to plead guilty in South Carolina state court to all state charges pending against him. That is, nine counts of murder, three counts of attempted murder, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony to avoid a second death sentence. In return, he accepted a sentence of life in prison without parole. On April 10, 2017, Roof was sentenced to nine consecutive sentences of life without parole after formally pleading guilty to state murder charges. Roof had a prior police record consisting of two arrests, both made in the months preceding the attack. He was investigated on one occasion during this period, but without arrest or charge. These charges included a misdemeanor drug possession and trespassing a ban on the Columbiana Center Mall. According to James Coney, speaking in July 2015, Roof's February arrest was at first written as a felony, which would have required an inquiry into the charge during a firearms background examination. It was legally a misdemeanor charge and was incorrectly written as a felony at first due to a data entry error made by a jail clerk. Comey said that Roof could potentially have been prohibited from buying firearms under a law that barred, quote, unlawful users of or addicted to any controlled substance, close quote, from owning firearms, although UCLA law professor Eugene Volokh wrote that it is unclear whether Roof's misdemeanor possession charge would have meant he met that definition. African Methodist Episcopal Church in downtown Charleston, South Carolina, United States. During a routine Bible study at the church, a white man about 21 years old, later identified as Roof, opened fire with a handgun, killing nine people. Roof was unemployed and living in largely African-American Eastover at the time of the attack. His motivation for the crimes is not up for debate. He was a raging white supremacist and neo nazi one interesting thing to note is a statement made by a friend who briefly hid Roof's gun from him. He said, quote, I don't think the church was his primary target because he told us he was going for the school, but I think he couldn't get into the school because of the security, so I think he just settled for the church, close quote. On the day he was captured, June 18, 2015, Roof confessed to committing the Charleston attack with the intention of starting a race war and repeatedly told investigators he almost did not go through with his mission because members of the church study group had been so nice to him. Federal prosecutors said in August 2016 that Roof was, quote, self-radicalized online instead of adopting his white supremacist ideology, quote, through his personal associations or experiences with white supremacist groups or individuals or others. An excerpt from the New York Times of Roof's website reads, quote, I have no choice. I am not in the position to, alone, go into the ghetto and fight. I chose Charleston because it is the most historic city in my state, and at one time had the highest ratio of blacks to whites in the country. We have no science, no real case, no one doing anything but talking on the internet. Well, someone has to have the bravery to take it to the real world, and I guess that has to be me, close quote. 
FBI analysis of Roof's seized cell phone and computer found that he was in online communication with other assists, according to unnamed officials. Although Roof's contacts did not appear to have encouraged the massacre, the investigation was said to have widened to also include other persons of interest. The killing of Trayvon Martin was incredibly important in awakening this putrid ideology within Roof. Discussing Martin's murder, Roof writes on his website, quote, I read the Wikipedia article and right away I was unable to understand what the big deal was. It was obvious that Zimmerman was in the right. But more importantly, this prompted me to type the words, quote, black on white crime, close quote, into Google, and I have never been the same since that day. The first website I came to was the Council of Conservative Citizens. There were pages upon pages of these brutal black on white murders. I was in disbelief. At this moment, I realized that something was very wrong. How could the news be blowing up the Trayvon Martin case while hundreds of these black on white murders got ignored, close quote. The attack was treated as a hate crime by police, and officials from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, were called in to assist in the investigation and manhunt. At 10.44 a.m. on the morning after the attack, Roof was captured in a traffic stop in Shelby, North Carolina, approximately 245 miles, 394 kilometers, from the shooting scene. A 45 caliber pistol was found in the car during the arrest, though it was not immediately apparent if it was the same one used in the attack. Police received a tip-off from a driver, Debbie Dills, from Gastonia, North Carolina. She recognized Roof driving his car, a black Hyundai Elantra, with South Carolina license plates and a three-flag Confederate States of America bumper decoration on U.S. Route 74, recalling security camera images taken at the church and distributed to the media. She later recalled, quote, I got closer and saw that haircut. I was nervous. I had the worst feeling. Is that him or not? Close quote. She called her employer, who contacted local police, and then tailed the suspect's car for 35 miles until she was certain authorities were moving in for an arrest. His older half-sister also reported him to the police after seeing his photo on the news. Roof was arrested and interrogated by agents of the FBI. He stated that he was planning to travel to Nashville, Tennessee when he was arrested in Shelby. Roof initially did not believe his interrogators when they informed him that the death toll of his attack was nine people, believing the number of casualties must be lower, saying he felt, quote, bad after learning the true number. An unidentified source said interrogations with Roof after his arrest determined he had been planning the attack for around six months, and we will review this when we review the interrogation footage. He had also researched Emanuel AME Church and targeted it because of its role in African American history. In January 2020, it was reported that Roof was appealing his death sentence. According to a 320-page brief filed by Roof's lawyers in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit, Roof's representing himself during the penalty phase of his trial deprived the jury of extenuating information about his mental illness. The brief cites the Supreme Court's ruling in Indiana v. Edwards that judges can force a lawyer on defendants who lack mental capacity. On May 25, 2021, his lawyers began an appeal process before the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit, claiming that Roof was, quote, too disconnected from reality, close quote, to represent himself at the federal trial. In the 321-page motion, his attorneys argue that he had disorders ranging from schizophrenia spectrum to autism, anxiety, and depression, and that he did not care about his sentence, in the belief that white nationalists would rescue him from prison after an impending race war. The defense team also argued that Roof masked his mental illness during the trial. On August 25, 2021, a panel of the Fourth Circuit unanimously rejected Roof's appeal. Upholding the death sentence, the judges wrote their 149-page opinion that, quote, no cold record or careful parsing of statutes and precedents can capture the full horror of what Roof did. His crimes qualify him for the harshest penalty that a just society can impose, close quote. On September 10, 2021, his attorneys appealed the judge's ruling. On September 24, 2021, a federal court declined to take the appeal case against the panel's decision, arguing in a one-page file that the appeals should go before the full appeals court. A day prior, attorneys for the federal government opposed appeals, saying that Roof was properly convicted and sentenced, saying that there is, quote, no need to revisit, close quote, the facts for which Roof was found guilty. On March 2, 2022, attorneys for Roof announced that they had asked the Supreme Court to resolve the dispute between them and their client over the mental illness defense. Roof had fired his attorneys to prevent them from portraying him as having a mental illness. The attorneys argued that they should have been allowed to remain on the case. On October 11, 2022, it was announced that the Supreme Court had refused to comment on the case, thus denying the appeal. The interrogation would play a pivotal role in the trial. 
Here is the interrogation of Dylan Roof. Hey, how are you? Michael Sansbury. Mike Stars. Hey, hey, Dylan, I'm Michael Sansbury. How are you doing? Good. Hey, are you done with this? Yeah, I'll get it out of your way, bro. Well. Dylan, I'm crazy. How are you doing? Got any extra, extra water there for you? Nice and cold. We immediately see that the detectives and interrogators are being extremely nice to Roof, clearing his water bottles, giving him new water, and claiming it is nice and cold. Hey, uh, you want to take those cuffs off right Should I this for privacy? Or? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Well, can you tell us about what happened last night? Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, I went to that church in Charleston, and, uh, Did it? Did what? <laughs> well, you, I mean, uh, I know it's tough sometimes to to say. Uh, it. It's not that I don't want to say it because I don't want to make myself seem guilty. I just don't really like saying it. But I know sometimes we have to face those things, the realities. You know. Well, you don't want to put any words in your mouth. That's why. You know, right. That's why Agent Stansbury just. Sweet. I was asking him what it exactly is that you that you that you did do. Well, I did. I killed. Him. Well, I guess. I mean, I don't really know. Well, what? What? what, what I mean, well, I, mean, I don't know how many people or anything like that. So, did you shoot him? Yes. What kind of gun did you use? <laughs> A Glock forty-five. So fascinating, creepy, and eerie that he laughs when the detective asks him this question. Was that was that your gun or? Yes, I bought it from the gun store. Which gun store did you buy that from? Uh, you pulled out the gun and you shot him. Started shooting people, or, or how, I mean, how? Yeah, that's it. I mean, so. Do you know how many people you shot? If I was going to guess... Five? Five. Maybe? I'm really not sure. Exactly. Just search. Well... Four, five? Four. I'm not sure. Did, did you say anything to them before or after or during? No, I didn't say anything to them before or anything. Before and what about what about after? Well, I think like during I said like don't talk to me or something like that, you know. Like why you while you were shooting? Well, they're like in the middle, you know. I mean I didn't really talk to them. Okay. Uh -huh. How long how long were you at the church before you actually uh before you you pulled your weapon out. You you said yourself you shot. You think maybe five or so people. How long were you were you at the church before you decided that you were going to do that? Well, I just went in the church, you know, and then I sat down with them for like maybe fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. It could have been twenty. It could have been ten, but I think it was probably around fifteen. Were they having a meeting or something? Or? No, no, no. This was a Bible study class. So you knew what the Bible study class was going to happen? Yes, because I had went there before and asked them. Okay, so you've been to the church before? Well, not in it. But outside and said, when do you have Bible study? Or? Well, yeah, I just saw somebody get into the car and asked them. When was that? Oh, that was like, oh, God. That was probably... I, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. But, well, <coughs> right, right before, or when you pulled out your gun and started to shoot her right before. 
did you say, remember what you said, or if you said anything to the people when you pulled? Because I mean, oh, no, I didn't if you suddenly pulled out a gun, and I was like, right, that's what, what I did. I didn't say anything to them before I pulled it out. Did they? Not even one word. I didn't say anything. To them. Did they? Did they see or anybody react to you as you pulled the gun out, or were you already shooting before they knew what was happening? I mean, they reacted after I shot. Yeah, right, we understand. Yeah, yeah. That. Right. I guess my, my question, and it might have been a bad question, I was just trying to figure out, you know, some of the, if I suddenly found out the gun, but if I pulled the gun out and everybody saw it, people might start to run or whatever. Oh, no, 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 it was very fast. It was not like I was like, you know, it was like quick motion. So can you show what, what, were you sitting down and you did it, or did you stand up or what? Yeah, I was sitting down the first, the first shot. Can, can you show me, like, what you did? I mean, yeah, it was just like, you know. Did you, like this, or this? Yeah, like, you know? And just started shooting at yeah. people. Yeah. And we'll go back and I'll ask you some more questions. Oh, see, I had it in a bag. It was in a bag. And the bag's there. I dropped it. Yeah. You dropped it. It was bag. a black bag. Look, oh. it was like a thing you can buy a sporting goods thing, you know, for military people to hook on their whatever, their vests or whatever. But I just put it in my belt, and I had all my magazines and the gun in there. When I walked in the church. This thing was right on me, in front of me, you know. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh my God, they're going to see it, you know. And obviously they did, because I mean, this thing is big, it's heavy, uh -huh. you know, because it's got, what, seven magazines, with, and I put 11 bullets in each magazine. Uh -huh. They can hold 13, but I didn't want any jam, like it to jam or anything like that. So, you know, but anyway, it's still really heavy. Anyway, they saw it, but I just sat down, because I guess they just didn't say anything. You know, and then I was sitting there and I was like, you know, just thinking about whether I should do it or not. You know, and it's, that's why I was sitting there for 15 minutes, just like, oh, uh, you know, like, because I know I could have just walked out, you know, because they didn't say anything to me about what, you know, the thing on my belt. So I could have walked out, you know, and that's why I was just thinking, you know. But then I just, you know, like, I just, uh, like, I don't know, it's like, no, I you want to say spur of the moment, but you know, I just I just finally decided I had to do it. And that's pretty much it. Well well that that's that goes to the next question. Why did you have to do it? Oh I had to do it. How come? I mean that's what I, that's what I don't know. Me. Oh. Well, I had to do it because somebody had to do something. Because, you know, black people are killing white people every day on the streets. And they rape, they rape white women, 100 white women a day. That's an FBI statistic from 2005. Here we see Roof give his first hint at his motivation in this interrogation, his anti-black racism. Yeah, that's 10 years ago. It's not even being more now, who knows. It sounds unrealistic, but you break it down, that's two estates, it's really not unrealistic. Could probably be more. You know, the fact of the matter is, what I did is so minuscule to what they're doing to white people every day, all the time. And just because that doesn't get on the news doesn't mean it's not happening. You know, everybody knows that the news is biased for black people. You know, we can pretend it's not, but we know it is. Dylan, did when. <coughs> You said you had to do this because, so basically what you're... I had to do it because nobody else is going to do it. Nobody else is brave enough to do anything about it, you know. Back in the late 80s and the early 90s, you know, we had skinheads and stuff like that. There's no skinheads left. There's no KKK. KKK never did anything anyway. Yeah. So basically you were trying to make a... Uh you're trying to make a statement or prove a point on behalf of the white race, is that what you're saying? Yeah, in a way, I guess. Did somebody help? Did, did, did you talk to people or anybody in particular about this prior to making this decision oh, to do this? No. This, no. So you came, you came about this decision solely, solely by yourself? Right. While he may have acted alone, there is substantial evidence that Roof was influenced by certain media outlets and by certain influential figures. And did you, uh, it, what is the reason why you, because you said you, uh, you'd never been in that church before. Right. But you said as you were driving by once, and correct me if I'm wrong, you saw somebody getting into the car, so you asked Oh yeah, them, I was walking. Okay, you were walking, mm -hmm. and you saw somebody getting into a car, so you asked the, 
You asked about a Bible study, is that correct? No, I just asked him, I said, when is the church service, you know, and then she told me the church service and the Bible study or something like that, the times or something. Is it, was that an African-American woman or a white yes, woman? Yes, yes. Well, this is an African Methodist Episcopal, is that what AB stands for? I think I think that's what it stands for. I'm not really so sure. that, that's why you want to that why that you chose church? that church? Oh yes. Because you were looking for African Americans. Right. Right. I wasn't going to go to another church, you know, because there could have been white people there. So you 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 didn't want to kill any white people, or shoot any. Oh no. You just wanted to sh to to to, to, no. to black people. All right. He would shoot multiple white people. Yeah. And what was the reason why? Um, because if you're from, you're, you, you lived with your dad's for a while and you stayed at your mom's right. for a while. What was the reason why you chose Charleston as your location? Why why oh, that particular area there? Well, the reason I chose Charleston is because, you know, it's just, it's, I like Charleston. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really nice down there. And, uh, it's a historic city, you know. You know, at one time, I think it had the highest ratio of black people to white people in the whole country you know, when, when we had slavery, but, you know, and then the other reason is just because that AME church was historic, too, you know, it was an historic AME church. I mean, I guess that's pretty much the reason. Well, how did you find out about that AME church in Charleston? Did you research it? Yeah, I just looked up black churches. On the internet? Yeah. Where did you do that at? Uh, there's a website called SCI Way, like SCIWay.net. You know, it's got a bunch of stuff about South Carolina. Okay. So you were you went on the internet to look to find black churches, and you knew South Charleston had a, a high black population. In the right. Well, I could have done it in Columbia too. There's black churches in Columbia. It's just I don't know. I just wanted to go to Charleston, I guess. But, um, but that church, the fact that that church was a historic, historic church, been around a long time. Right. That was gonna. That was gonna. I mean, I guess what I'm asking is, were you trying to make sure you were sending a message out? You wanted to send a message. Right. You wanted people to know, hey. Yeah. I gotta stop this, or what? You right. know, right? That's your. That was your message. Right. You know, and that one's right, right by downtown, right by King Street. You know? uh -huh. So, did, did, when when you first walked in and they were having a. Uh, Bible study. Did anybody even acknowledge you or say anything or say, you know? Yeah, they did. Out? They gave me a uh, they gave me a sheet. They gave me a sheet. So they will they welcomed you. These people did. Right, but I, I mean, I didn't like I said, I didn't say anything to them. They just handed me the sheet, pretty much. Just, you know, there wasn't that many people there. I think but, there was only like eight people there. So when you walked in, there were eight people. Was it was it in the main sanctuary? Was it in a? a what, what do you recall when you walked in? There were eight people. Where were they all positioned? Were they just around like tables? Around tables? Yeah. It wasn't in the sanctuary. Okay. So it was around tables. And yeah. Where did you position yourself? Were you in front of them? In like in the midst of them? Were you in back of them? To the side of them? Do you recall? Well, you know, they just. There's like a table here and a table here, you know, and I was sitting over here. Most of the other people were over here. Can you draw that out for me? Would you mind doing that? Just... Uh, I can if you want. Yeah, that's Having suspects draw out a scene is very commonly employed in the read technique, which is a common technique of interrogations. Just, just so I have a better understanding. Just like when you, so when you walked in, just show me like where the tables were and... Door right here. Okay. And there's a table here, a table here, you know. And then like another little table here. If you can like if you can like do like little circles to indicate where the people were, that for the best of your recollection. Okay, well just like I said, most of the people were like over here. Uh -huh. yeah, or maybe like this. And then but I was at this table. So put put an X put an X where you were. Was there anybody else at that table with you? No. Okay. But this is, yeah, that's pretty, I mean, I don't know, that's probably about one, two, six. I don't know. Sure. That's probably about the right number, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. Right. But this is the door. So you walked in, and you right. said... Right, I was walked over here, and they gave me, you know, a sheet. A little sheet. And you said you put your bag down on the ground? Is that what you said? Oh, no, no, no. Or you had the bag on you? Yeah, the bag was on me. Okay. I dropped the bag afterwards, like, as I was leaving. I got you. 
it. So, so you had you had the bag on you. It's about when you finally thought, no, I've got to do this. I've got I've got to, you know, you came here to do it, and you told yourself you had a thought. You, you had a thought about leaving, right? Yes, I did. But then you said, no, I, I'm here. I got to do it. Right. And so you, you pulled your gun out of the bag. How many magazines did you have in your bag? Eight. Yeah, eight. But that one was in the gun. Yeah, so seven in the bag. Seven in the bag. Okay. Yeah. So, for the how many times did you reload? All the times. So you went through all eight magazines. Yes. No, 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 no. Actually, no. I went through seven magazines, and I took one magazine with me, which is still the gun. gun. And, and where's the gun at now? Well, it wasn't my car when they arrested. When they arrested, so the gun. And I told them about it. And it's got a loaded, the one loaded mag. So you shot through. You had essentially, I said you put like 10, 11 bullets in each magazine. So, right. So, so the gun wouldn't malfunction with misfeed or whatever, right? Right. right. And so you you went you reloaded, you shot and reloaded seven times. Or am I right? One of the magazines. So, so. Well, reloaded. Yeah, because the last one you took with you. You shot. Right. One that was in there. Shot it. Went through six more magazines shooting and right. then you little. Did you so but by that time I mean people that were already down, did you walk up and shoot them that had already, you know, um went to the fellow? Well, see, it was sort of complicated because they were all like under the tables, you see what I'm saying? It's not like I uh, was like uh, you know, going around shooting people that were already dead or anything like that. It's just when I shot a magazine it's like I just went pop 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 you see what I'm saying? Like at one person, you see what I'm saying? So, so they, so when you started shooting, I guess you say you were so quick shooting, like maybe they didn't even see where it was coming from. Right, well, the all, first shots, and they all dove under the table. Right, 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 right. Everybody knew where. Everybody did. Yeah. And then you went around the tables to shoot them. No, not not exactly. You, you know, because there's some people that I didn't shoot. I think there was two people that I didn't even shoot at all. Like one woman was over here, you know, and I didn't even shoot her at all. Because she was like looking at me and stuff. Well, she, she, so you didn't shoot that one woman because she was looking at you. <laughs> but but actually, it's, no, hard, exactly. it's hard to shoot somebody when they're looking at you, right? I mean, it is. It's hard to shoot somebody anyway. Right, right. But the other people, so were, you, were they were shooting them in the back or or just wherever they were, however they were? Right, just them. however they were laying, I guess. Like multiple times. So the first magazine, if I'm going to you pull out, you just start shooting. You go through that very quick. Everybody right. dies under the table. Right. You then reload the magazine. Do you like just get up and start going around? There's people under the table just shooting. You know. Yeah, but you know, I was, you know, I was sort of pacing around, you know, because I was like freaking out a little bit too. You know what I mean? It's not. I, I was. There was pauses in between, and I was thinking about, you know, what I should do and stuff. But I guess in a way, I guess you could say that's what I was doing. But but did did anybody try and run or did no, all under the table? No, see, I thought everybody was going to try to run out the door, but nobody did. They all went under the table. And 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 nobody charged you to try and stop you. No. All right, and, and we'll come back more. But so you you go through you, the one woman you didn't shoot at all. She looked at you, and then there was another person you said you didn't shoot at all. Was that a woman or a man or? Yeah, I think it was a woman. Okay. And did she look at you too? Or no, she, no, she she wasn't. Looking. Why didn't you shoot? I mean, her? she might have got shot. I'm not saying she didn't get shot, but I'm saying I didn't aim at her and shoot. Okay. Was there a reason why you didn't aim at her and shoot? Uh, no, I can't really say a reason. Okay, so after you shoot, do you leave all your magazines laying on the ground? Yes. Except for you put a fresh one in, so you, your eighth magazine you load. Right. So you drop, you leave the bag there, you've got the gun. What do you do next? Well, then I leave. Right. Oh, well, I mean, but you go out the, the door and let me. door I came. Okay, and where did you go to? I mean, where's your car? Did you, where's your car? I went to my car. And where, where had you parked at? Right by the door. Just out on the street? Or is it a parking lot? Literally there? right by the store. So you have a parking space. So this right is, th there's, this is a street parking right out here? No, no, no. This, they've got a gate. And then they've got parked. Oh, so you went into the gate and parked. Yes, yes. yes. And then got out, parked by the door, walked in, walked out. Would you would you mind initialing this and write write the word door right there? Initialing this? Well this so they so it's yours so later you can say, Yeah, that's me. I mean just write the word door right there. You'd write initial like right about where you were. I don't know if I said initial. That's fine. That's okay. You don't have to. That's fine. Um
Even if Roof does not initial the statement, it is likely that his confession will hold up in court and be sufficient evidence to convict. But anyway, so you go and you get your car, and you, uh, you get your, and leave. So where do you go? Well, to be honest, I was in absolute awe that there was nobody out there after I had shot that many bullets. I was like, right. oh my God, what are these cops doing? They're not even really doing their job. If you hear how many shots, I don't know how many shots that was. You know, what's, what is it? Seven times 11. 77. You know, there's not even a cop outside. You know, so obviously, when I walked out that door, you know, I peeked out the door. Because I thought there was going to be somebody there ready to shoot me, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's really why I had the last magazine. It's not to shoot cops, it's so I can shoot myself. You see what I'm saying? When they when I saw a cop. So you, would, you had it, so if, if the law enforcement would show up, you were going to go ahead and Yeah, I wasn't going to ever shoot at a cop. I was going to shoot myself. But anyway, like I said, there was, there was no cop. So I just got in my car and then uh, I just drove out of Charleston, you know, onto the interstate. To, to 26? Like the interstate going back to Columbia? They would think it was in that direction, but I didn't go back to Columbia. Where'd you go to? Charlotte. So, so, you, so you, you drove up 26 to, did you drive up the interstate the whole way to Charlotte? No, 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 no. Or no, no. I was, was taking all kinds of routes, I don't know. What was the reason you chose to, you chose to drive to Charlotte? Well, I just didn't want to go back to Columbia, and I just, like I said, you know, I was still in all that I even was driving at all. I even got away. Sure, you know sure. So it's I just picked a place. So you didn't expect to survive. Oh no. So okay. So we'll go back to where, where you were. Because I, I had some more questions to get to know you, or you know, to that point. Well, is it are these the clothes you were wearing last night? Or did you change? Yes. Them? So no, you were, I haven't changed. So you those were the Timberland boots and the, the black pants. Did you have a, a jacket or a hoodie on or something? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I had a long sleeve shirt on. Oh, over the, this. Over the, Where's that at now? It's in, it's in your car. Okay, so these are the clothes you, you wore. And, and essentially, we'll, we'll kind of come back to where you went. So I'm just going to kind of recap. You you picked the AME church out, the African American Episcopal Church. It's, it's a historic been church been around a long time. It's a black church. You knew there'd be black people there, probably not any white people there, mm -hmm. right? Because you did not want to kill any white people. You went there with the intent to kill black people in retaliation for what other black people have been doing in the United States. Mm -hmm. That's why you went, right? And so, and, and to make a point, right? I don't know who we'll call it a, I mean, what do you, is, is it to you, is it, sometimes we use the word political or revolutionary or? Well, I guess it could be considered political. Political. So is it safe to say, you know, you don't like black people? That's fair. What, what black people is a race do, right? Is that what you're saying? Or in America, or the whole world, or what? In America, in Europe, there's a whole bunch of black people in Europe now yep. doing the same things. So, so, what you did, I mean, this shooting was all about because they were black. It wasn't, I mean, that's why, I mean, I know because, and, and let me make sure I'm clear on this, if it you already said, if it wouldn't have been a, a black people in that church, you would have never walked in there right. and shot them. Right. I mean, it was because of your your belief, your understanding of what black people in America and the world are doing mm -hmm. to society, mm -hmm. the, the crimes and everything else. And you wanted to, it, it was a retaliation or a... Right, well, or, you know, obviously oh. I realized that these people, you know, they're, they're at church, you know, they're not criminals or anything, but that's not because the criminal black people kill innocent white people every day. So what was the what was your point then? What point were you trying to make? Like you, you said right there, these people were in church; they were innocent. Right. But what was the so what was the point of, of targeting them? Because I just knew that that would be a place where there would be a you know at least you know a small amount of white people you know in one area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. 
I thought about going to like a black festival or something like that, but they got security and stuff, and you got to wait for the day. You know, you can't do it whenever you're ready. So, so I am. I, so we're understanding you correctly. You, you specifically did your homework, obviously, because you were quoting statistics earlier. You, you, you did research, and so you, you you specifically chose an area where there would be all African Americans there. Is that correct? Yes. Are you are you in any type of a? Uh, uh, well, you, earlier you made and you mentioned like the neo Nazis. Yeah, and skinheads. 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 So, I, mean, I wish there were, but there are. Are you so you're not in any? Are you in any groups like that? No. Like, the, 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 or I guess it was. Do you have other associates or friends that are? Well, let me back up. Would you consider yourself a white supremacist? And sometimes that's hard. hard but, no, but the white people are superior. I'm a white nationalist. A white nationalist. Yeah, a white supremacist. Okay. But, what's what's what, what's your definition of the two then? You're sitting. You're not a white supremacist. You're a white nationalist. What's in your mind? Well, what's no, the difference? How about this? I do consider myself a white supremacist. Sure. And, and white it, people are superior. That's what you mean. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Right. You know that that the, the white race is superior to all the other races. And one. And so you're. No, no, no. No, I don't no. think there's like, for example, you know, you got East Asian people. They got higher IQs than white people. I don't have a problem admitting that. It's just the facts. So you. So as a white supremacist, it's only to certain races? Right. Well, look, white people are superior to blacks or, you know, Hispanics. You know, but then you got white Hispanics, you know? Uh -huh. So, you know. Yeah. Or Indians, you know, Arabs, Southeast Asians, you know. Only other races probably, you know, about equal to white people would be like East Asians, you know, like Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, people like that. But as a white supremacist, you still think that you're, you still think the white race is superior to East Asians, even though they have a higher IQ, you said the higher IQ than Caucasians. I think in general, yes. I mean, because we've invented a lot more stuff than them. But so, they're, good at, they're good at improving on our inventions. Sure. But in your mind, the white race is the, is the dominant race. <laughs> no, I don't think the white race is the dominant race. I wish it was, though. You know, I think it should be. Do, do, That's do, the problem. Do you think, like, what you did last night, do you think that helps to, to maybe, are you, I guess, are you trying to start a revolution to where other people say, hey, it's time to stand up, and if everybody does this? You know what, you, you understand yeah, what I'm saying? I'm not delusional. I don't think, you know, that something like what I've done could start, like, a race war or anything like that, you know, but. But, I mean, would you like that? I mean, would that be, would that help? Yeah, well, a race war would be pretty terrible. People dying all the time. Yeah, yeah it, it would. But you know, I'd rather just, you know, just be able to like reinstate segregation or something like that. You know, without there having to be a race war. But you know, I there probably will be a race war eventually. But just segregation, right? I mean, it's all. I mean, that would be okay with me for right now. But like I said, you know, that's sort of unrealistic. That black people aren't just going to let themselves, you know, go back into segregation. Not that segregation was bad, you know, it wasn't. How, how long have you, um, how long have you felt this way? I mean, the, it, I guess my question is, was there ever a time where you? Right. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. The first thing that I guess I could say, I, I would say, woke me up, you know, would be the, the Trayvon Martin case. You know, and that was a while back. Right. It was like two years ago, you know, and you know, I, I I kept hearing about this kid, you know, and I'm like, eventually I decided to you know look look his name up, just type him into Google, you know what I'm saying? And then I read the the Wikipedia article about Trayvon Martin, and I couldn't understand what the big deal was. You see what I'm saying? And then. For some reason, after I read that, I I, I typed in. Uh, for some reason, it made me type in the, the words "black on white crime," and that's that was it. You know, ever since then. So prior to that, you really didn't think too much about black and white relations or white and black relations. All right. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, you live in South Carolina. You know, there's so many black people here. You know, every white person in South Carolina probably has at least a little bit of racial awareness, you know, naturally because there's so many black people. But 
it's superficial, you see what I'm saying? It's no real understanding behind it. Right. So, so basically, after the Trayvon Martin incident, you yeah. said you said it woke you up, and you did a little bit of research. Right. Right? After you researched that, and you started looking at, you said black on white crime. Is that correct? Right. So, what happened after that? If you could, just just carry me through the. You, know, you studied that. Were there other other re other research uh, topics that you looked into? Well, then I found out. You know, like I said, what was happening in Europe? In a lot of ways, it's even worse over there than it is here. London's only sixty percent white. You know, we've got so many Muslims over there in Europe, they're being swamped. There's going to be a race war in Europe, too, I bet. You know, France, they don't even take demographics. Well, on this incident, did, did you share, I mean, were any of your views shared by any of your friends or anything? I mean, oh, no. did you ever talk to any of them about it? No. No, no, well, wait, you, do, you have a, do you have a phone, a cell phone or anything? Oh, no, I don't even. So, how do you communicate? With, uh, I don't. You know, <laughs> so like if your dad or somebody wants to get a hold of you, how they would they get a hold of you? Oh, I just, I just call my house. Okay. Now, um, who, who's your best friend? Well, I don't have a best friend. Uh, or do you have a friend? Do you know? Uh, I don't know do you know a guy named Joey Meeks? Yes. Are y'all friend? Are y'all friends? Yes. Did Did he know? Anything about you wanting to do this? Did you talk to him about it? What you wanted to do? Okay. D does he share some of the same views you do? About I mean, you know, usually, you know, sometimes our friends, they, we hang with people that share our views. I mean, that's, right. that's life, right? Yeah. Like minded people. But I've never even, you know, talked about race around, you know, other people and stuff like that yeah. because they probably wouldn't agree with me, see what I'm saying? So, okay. Well, what, like, what about at home? No. You don't know what Because they, they wouldn't like it, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, you, you like, you, your dad didn't know. Oh, no. Because uh, like, right. they wouldn't yeah. like it. You're right. They would say, hey. Did you, ever, did you ever bring that topic up to your dad or your sister or anybody, your grandparents? Did you ever <laughs> just talk about it and then. No. No? no. Never? Yeah. Well, we're going back to the last night again at the church. Do you know about how many men or women that were there? Or right, eight. I'm guessing eight. If if I told you that someone there said um, that when you started shooting, or right when you did it, that you said, "I have to kill black people," did you? No, did you I didn't say that. You don't remember saying that? No, I didn't. I probably said something similar to that. What do you think? In the middle of it. Yeah, okay, okay. Because, right. right. yeah, well, that's right. When you start shooting, you just pull out and start shooting because you want to get the jump on. Right. Of course. Right. Because if, if they saw it, somebody might have tackled you or whatever before you got the gun out. Right. And you thought about that. Right. I mean, did you like practice somewhere oh, no, drawing? I didn't practice or anything like that. Did, but, did you ever go to the gun range or out the country to, to practice shooting? Well, I'd shot my gun before, you yeah. know. But, where, where would yeah. you go? Um. I just shot it at my house. Uh, at East Oak. Right, because that's how it's Yeah, it's in the country. It's in the country. Where did you get the, what kind of bullets did you use? Uh, just the 45 bullets. I mean, did you like try and buy any special bullets, hollow points? Uh, yeah, there were hollow points, but you know, they were just the cheap. Did you, did you, but did you get those and set a ball for any reason? Or, I mean, did you even think about it, or is it just that's what you had? Well, no, I mean, I just saw them there and it sounded good. You know? So you bought the bullets, you. So walk me through this. What, how, when did you decide, all right, I, I know you went to the church before and you found out that church meetings on Wednesday. So at some point, you then decide, okay, you have your gun, right? You bought that just a while back. Do you go to the store and you say, all right, I'm going to buy these, but i got to get the bullets for the job? No, I had had bullets, you know. I mean, I had bought bullets weeks ago. Okay, but did you buy that? Did you buy the bullets with the intent of doing... Uh, uh, that's going to kill the black people. You know, I mean, if, I mean, if you're at the gun store and you're like, yeah, these bullets right here, these are the bullets I need to get. Cause well, I guess so. I mean, you know, but I mean, I could have used them just to shoot the gun, too. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. But you wanted, I mean, and, right, I mean, I had to have enough bullets, right, you know, to fill up the magazines, sure. And then in the hollow points, you know, right. gun, gun bullets that are known to stop people. I mean, right. I mean, just like we carry bullets that are, you know, you know, you want to carry good bullets, and so you thought that. I'm just saying, did you think about it? I mean, yeah, I thought about it. Okay, and where did you buy the bullets at? Walmart. 
this Walmart? Which you know which one? Well, actually, I bought them at different WalMarts. You know, not for any reason. It's just they didn't have the money, you know, to buy them. All. So you just kind of stop. I mean, not I say stop. You go to your Walmart. Well, it's just, just two. It's only two boxes, you know. But two boxes. So you bought one box in one Walmart and one box in another. Yeah. Do you remember which Walmarts they were? No, but they're all around Columbia. I know that. Mm -hmm. They're all around Columbia. Did you uh, use a credit card or pay cash for that? Do you remember how you paid for the bullets? I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell. So now we're kind of going back to what you mentioned before when you left. And you're kind of in shock. Hey, the police didn't show up. I'm alive. I didn't have to kill myself because that's what you were going to do when you came out, right? right. Was, and, and, and so you're like, where do I go? And you just, you drove right. all over to you, decided to come to Charlotte. Right. And, and why did you decide to come to Charlotte? I don't know. You know, just the names, I just wanted to come to Charlotte. Okay. So you, it was sort of close, you know, not too far away. Because yeah. you didn't have a lot of gas, you know. Were you, uh, obviously, I didn't want to use my debit card at the gas station, you know, because that would make tracking. Yeah, tracking. Did but you, obviously, I did use my debit card eventually. What did you use it? I uh, used it at ATM, because I had to get more gas. How much cash you get? Cash. You got cash out of the ATM, right? Yeah, I only got $20. Okay. And then you went and got some gas? Yeah. Where at? Yeah, it's in Charlotte. Okay, now, then you drove out this way to, I mean, to Shelby. Did, were you when they stopped you? Were you driving, or were you? Yeah, I was driving. And so they pulled you over. Did what did you think? What went through your head? Oh well, I knew they were going to get me eventually, anyway. Yeah. I was just waiting for them. Where was the gun? I mean, did you think I was? No, the gun was in the back seat. Oh no! no By no. that time, you said, ah, "I guess I'm not going to have to kill myself, right?" Well, right. I had already decided that it's just a bad idea. Yeah. Did you when the when the when the policeman pulled you over? And obviously, you didn't want to do that. I mean, you you. You were, you had decided all right, I'm just gonna give up. Right. Okay. Did you say anything to the policeman after when he pulled you over and he walked up to the car? Oh no, I didn't say anything. Just you know, told me to put my hands on the wheel and that's it. He didn't tell you why he was stopping you. Oh, I mean, no. you I knew, knew right? Was stopping me. Yeah. But uh, did you, I mean, did you tell him I did it, or do you remember saying anything like that? No, I didn't say anything like that. They just said. Are you connected to what happened? I think something like that. Yeah, I just said yes. Okay. And then you told them, you said, I think you said you told them the gun's in the car. Right. They said, is there anything in the car? And then I said, yeah, the gun's on the back seat. Okay. Where were you headed to when they stopped you? They turned. Well, I was going to, it might sound sort of weird, but I was going to try to go to Nashville. Nashville? Why? Yeah. Why Nashville? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. For no reason. I've never been to Nashville. Yeah. But it's sort of far away. I don't know if I've been able to make it. So you really didn't have a good pl escape plan because you didn't think you'd make it out. Right, there was no escape plan. Had you thought about going, hey, I guess more bullets and go shoot some more people? Oh, or, or no, I of... was worn out. There's no way. <laughs> How did it make you feel afterwards? I mean, I mean, it's got to be a lot of adrenaline, right? Running, driving back. No, yeah. not in any adrenaline. Are you, um, are you glad you did what you did? And do you think it sent the message you wanted at the sun? I really couldn't tell you. I have no clue if, whether it sent a message or not. But how do you feel personally about it? Are you glad you did it? Well, I wouldn't say I'm glad I did it, you know, but I've done it, so. You said it was something you had to do? Yeah, I had to do it. If you were, if you could back up, would, would you do it again? I mean, that's, that's how strongly you felt about this issue, right? Well, at the moment, you know, if I could back up to where I was just still sitting at the table thinking about walking out, I might walk out, I'm not going to lie. But, you know, yeah. I didn't want it. It did. So, what is your thought about those people, though? The, 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 I mean, because I think you kind of alluded to earlier. They're, I mean, in your mind, they're innocent people, right? I mean, they, they were clearly church going people, they're in a Bible study. I'm trying not to really think about it, you know. But I mean, I guess the I guess the question would be: Is it because they were black that really kind of overrode everything else? Because we ha you, you had to send that message. 
Well, it's like this, you see. I'm not in the position, you know, by myself, you know, to go into like a black neighborhood, you know, or something like that and, and, and shoot up, you know, drug dealers or something like that. You see what I'm saying? This just that's not gonna do anything. You see what I'm saying? I had to go somewhere else. You see what I'm saying? So what you said you had to go somewhere where you could yeah. shoot some people without getting shot. I mean, that right? Right. I mean, you know, even if it, you know, it's not necessarily that, like, say, a black drug dealer would have shot me, you know, but say I would have shot him, that's only one person. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so it wasn't the fact that you could have shot him and he might have shot you. Right. It was the fact that you knew I could shoot more people. Like you alluded to, or, or you said earlier, right. I, I had, there was a lot, several people in that. Do you wish there would have been more people in there? I mean. No, because like I said, you know, if that was the case, I would have shot everybody in there. You see what I'm saying? Afterwards, you know, it was just like, oh. Uh, that's why I didn't shoot that other lady. I could have, but I didn't. Do you remember telling that lady, I'm going to let you live so you can tell my story? Or something yeah, like that? I don't remember saying that, but you know, there's really no story. What did she say to you when you said that? I don't think she said anything. Yeah. But, but I guess you said that, right? Because you thought, again, you thought you were going to walk out the door and probably, you, you didn't think he was going to leave that alive. Leave there alive. I didn't really know, you know, like I, I didn't hear anything out there, but you know, I thought they were probably out out there or something. So. The police. Right. Okay. And how, did you buy all those magazines at one time when you got the gun? Do they? I mean, so don't, does two usually come with it, or did you buy the spare? Did you go pick them up as you had money? Yeah, I just picked them up as I had money. And did you give them a shooter's choice also, or? I think I got most of the shooter's choice, but I might have gotten a couple somewhere else. But I think I got most of the shooter's choice. So you do you remember filling out the forty four seventy three that form, the ATF form, oh, you yeah, to yeah, fill yeah. out to get the gun, and you put all your information on there, right. and, and all that and everything. All right. And so, uh, is that the only gun you have? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, the only gun you've ever owned. Right. And did you get to, you carried that and kept that with you, or where did you keep that gun before before last night? Oh, I had it with me in my car. Right, but normally, did you always drive around with it, or did you like keep it at the house? Well, for the past like week or two, I had it in my car. Is that because you were at any time ready to go, or? Yeah, I guess. Did you purchase that weapon for the very purpose of doing what you did last night? Was that the reason you purchased the weapon? No, I wouldn't say that. I, I mean, I just wanted a gun, pretty much. Right. How long ago was it, would you say, that you actually, this is just like a backtrack. I don't want to keep, to keep having to go over the same stuff over and over again. I'm just trying to understand and make sure I understand correctly. You see, you really never thought about a lot of this stuff until roughly the Trayvon Martin incident, correct? Yes. So, right. when, you, so when you saw that, you got upset and you started doing some research on the computer. Mm -hmm. And you didn't like the, the statistics that you saw. Right. And that was roughly two years ago or so. Right. You seem very well versed and very well educated on you know, black on white crime or white on black crime, this, that, and the other. So you, you've done quite a bit of research. Is that safe to say? Oh, yeah, I know. A lot more stuff I could talk about, but, you know. Like what kind of stuff? I mean, just everything. I can't, I mean, I can't think of it now, but yeah, but what you're saying, yeah. Sure. Did you read a lot? Did you read books or watch videos or watch movies or YouTube or anything like that specifically about that subject matter? No, it's pretty much just reading articles. Reading articles? Yeah. And the more the more you read, the more. Yeah, obviously I've seen the videos of you know white people be you know beat and stuff like that. But, you know. Well, and staying where Craig's at on it, like in, in clothes. What kind of, did you like to wear black clothes and stuff a lot? I mean, was that kind of like? I don't like black. Black's a, it's a nice color for clothes. Yeah. Um. Obviously, that's a picture of you, right? Mm -hmm. Where is that? Is that the, the... This is in Charleston. In Charleston? Who, who took the picture? Me. I set it up on this post. Well, not that one. No, well, yeah, right, right here. The right post right here. Right, right. Okay. When, did, when was this picture taken? Maybe two 
2000. It could have been. It could have even been 2014. I'm not really sure. So Ben wasn't when you went down there before. Uh, and, and, Check the church out. Oh no! I mean, I've been to Tulsa a bunch of times. Oh, so you get shoes you like? They just go to, like that jacket right there. Mm -hmm. You still, is that? That's not the jacket you were wearing last night, right? Oh no! I was just wearing a long sleeve shirt. Was, was it a black long sleeve shirt? No, it was gray. Gray. Okay. What are the, like? What are those patches right there? Oh well, that's the south. That's the old South African flag, and that's the Rhodesian flag. Old South, like with that one. Yes. Okay. Rhodesia. Tell, can and, you tell me about in South Africa? So the old back when apartheid and back when it was a British colony, South right, Africa. That's the apartheid flag, and then Rhodesia, you know, that was a country in in southern Africa, right above South Africa. And was that their flag back when it was mm -hmm. controlled by the white? Right now it's Zimbabwe. Okay, but the white that's back when the white people controlled. Right. And what is? Um, um, oh, that's just uh, I got that jacket at Goodwill. That's just a uh, like a Richland. County academic all stars or something. Oh, okay. Did those patches come on that jacket when you got it, or did you oh, buy them and put them on there? I bought them. So what was the so what is the reason why you chose those part of all the patches you could have chose? Why did you choose those two patches? Well, because they represent white people ruling in the homeland of, of Africans and ruling as minorities. You know? Ruling as minorities. Yeah, it's, that's powerful. Okay. Okay. How come you're you get that mean look on your face in those pictures. No, I don't think it looks mean. Was that, I mean, you're not smiling. Were you trying to, I mean, or is that just you don't, what is the, yeah. Oh, well, that's 1488. You guys probably know what that means. Why don't you explain to me what that means? 14th century, we must secure the existence of our people and our future for white children in 88th century, Hell Hitler. So would you consider yourself a neo-Nazi then? Because, you no. know, I think to be considered a neo-Nazi, you got to be part of a real movement or something, you see. Do you, so, do you disagree with what Hitler did? Do you support Adolf Hitler? Because you're saying Hail Hitler in that statement there. Right. Uh, no, I support Hitler. And, and where, where was this? Is that in the center? Yeah, that's on Sullivan's Island. Oh, wait, did you drew that in there? In the yeah, picture? I just drew that. Wait, how long ago was that taken? Yeah, that's where it was. So all these would have been at the same time frame, you think, or? Yes, actually, I think they were. Nick, can you, can you ex explain it to me again what that 1488 means? Because I never heard it that um, meet that, that. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. That's the 14 words, and then 88 stands for Hell Hitler because it's H A H U. And who came up with the 1488 slogan? Do you remember the name of the person? I know you know who it is. Um, oh is his last name Lane? No, I don't. I well, who was he though? To you, you don't know his oh, name. Oh no, I don't know anything about him. I just heard his name or saw, saw his name. Yeah. I'm not really sure what his name is. But he just came. He, you know, he just came up with the 14 words. Right. He didn't come up with it. And do you, so you identify with and agree with what that what those numbers represent? Yeah, I guess so. Do, do, do you believe that that this that your actions last night, I mean, that'll make you a martyr amongst people of the similar beliefs? I mean, was that kind of your goal to become a martyr? I mean, if you're thinking you're gonna kill yourself, that's kind of what a martyr does, right? For the cause? That would be nice, sure, but I don't really know if that's what would happen or not. You see what I'm saying? I mean, did you want people to know who you were and what your cause was? Or were you trying to bring this cause attention yes. to the cause? Yes, I'd say so. I'd say so. So, sure. Can you tell me about this? Oh, that's just a DVD. This is amazing. Great. Uh, well, I know that. It's I, okay. I read, I read the back of that, and you, know, you obviously watched the movie. What was this movie about? Uh, this movie is just about a, a British skinhead in the 80s, like 82, I think. It's, it's not really that, it's not really like a real racist movie or anything like that. It's more just, he's just a delinquent, pretty much. Well, it talks about the uh, skinhead who's random acts of racism, vandalism, and violence. Right, but if you watch it, there's really nothing violent in it. No? No. What about American History X? You ever seen that movie? Yeah, I've seen it. What are your thoughts on that movie? That's an okay movie, but 
you know, it's got an anti-white ending, you know what I'm saying? The only reason, I think it's funny because that's a good movie, you know, but yeah. at the end of the movie, the only reason they give for you not to be a skinhead is because it's bad to go around with so much hate in your heart. That's literally the reason they give, and that's the only counter reason they have. So right. Saying. So in the movie, when Edward Norton's character went to prison and changed his ways and saw that people are, you know, everybody's kind of the same on the inside, no matter what, what their skin is on the outside. Everybody has the same struggles that they just may not, you know, I, I don't, I can't, you know, I don't know what a black man's struggle is, just like he really doesn't know what my struggle is. You know, we all have our own, own things we go through in life, you know. Um, so, in, in that movie, I mean, that's the whole point, right? So you're saying the way it turned out when Deborah Gordon comes out and he now realized he was wrong. You're saying he should have come out and realized he wasn't wrong. Of course. <laughs> right? That he should have... There was no... You know, it's just, it's just a movie. Yeah, it, it is. Right, but there's a lot of symbolism behind movies. Like in the beginning right. of the movie, it like shows... Like in the beginning of the movie, the first part of that movie is great. It's good. Why know? is that great? Because, you know, it shows him being, you know... Uh, in the beginning of the movie, I don't know. It's just... I'll, that's an okay movie. I don't really like it. Yeah, sure. Well, well kind, of, kind of going back, I keep saying that, kind of going back, so I'm trying to stick around my head around this whole thing. Do you have any remorse? Oh, I think it's too soon. What, what about regrets? Yeah, I'd say so. What, what do you regret? Oh, that's... You know, you know, I regret doing it a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. But part of you is glad you did it. Still, I mean, I, I mean, I kind of sense that from you, right? I mean, part of you. So you're proud. I mean, you're part. I mean, part of no, you. No, like, because that's like I said, I don't really know what I, exactly what I've done. You know. You know. I don't. What do you mean by that? I don't know how many people are killed or anything. How many do you think anybody died? I mean. I think. Or do you yeah, know? I think somebody died. I mean, how do you know? I mean, you would I don't know. know for sure. That's the you, problem. I mean, did, did you shoot anybody in the head? No, I don't think I did. Was it all? I intentionally, I didn't. I mean, I intentionally didn't shoot anybody. Were you aiming down the sides, or were you just shooting, pointing and shooting? You know the you know. Right, I was just pointing, but I didn't aim anybody's head. But getting back to his question, if I were to tell you that yes, there are dead people, do you regret that? Or mission accomplished. You said it was something you had to do. So I, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of one or the other, you know. No, it isn't one or the other. It isn't. So, well, but, 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 but what he's saying is, I mean, you're, you're, let, let me go. Your mission was it? It wasn't just to go shoot people. It, it was to, it was to kill black people, right? I mean, you know, forty five, Glock forty five. That. Everyone knows that that's that's the handgun. If, if you want to take care of business, I mean that that does the job, right? That's why you bought that handgun. Well, yeah. When I got a gun, I wanted to get the big, the best, the, the yeah. biggest caliber. Biggest caliber, and that and the and the lot that holds the most bullets for a forty-five. I mean, there, yeah. may be, there may be some that hold more. No, I don't want right. to, you know, whatever. But it, but it, and they're good guns. I mean, the police carry those right. guns. I mean, that's that's it's a good gun. And it's but going back, your your mission, your plan that you had established and decided you wanted to do, well, it was to kill black people. Mm -hmm. As many black people as you could in, 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 a, in one location. Exactly. Right, well, that was the original idea, but like I said, when I got in there, you know, it was not really about how many I could kill anymore, you see what I'm saying? What was it about? I don't know, I mean, it's just like, you know, after I'd already shot people, it's like, I didn't really even feel like I needed to shoot, you know, everybody, you see what I'm saying? Which, again, it goes back to what we said, well, you know, part of that, you know, you might have, you thought you were probably going to die, and someone could tell the story. Let them, you, know, <laughs> you know, that's that's more really an excuse. Yeah. It's not really, it's really that I just didn't want to kill her. So, you see what I'm saying? So, so if, if, I, if I told you nine people died last night, how would that make you feel? 
And I wouldn't believe you. There was nine. But there wasn't even nine people there. There was just a little bit over nine. But it's hard when you're looking at the tables to judge people. Okay. Oh, no. You said when you went in there, you said it could have been six, eight. You really weren't certain. You know. Are you guys lying to me? Yeah. No. Eight people were dead at the scene. Two were rushed to the hospital. So I guess it was ten people were shot. Uh, actually had gunshot injuries. That's my understanding. The, the, uh, the ninth person died at the hospital, but eight people were, were dead on the scene. They showed up. I mean, so I mean, so. How do you feel? In all honesty. Well, it makes me feel bad. But also, but 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 uh, it's critical symbol. I mean, your mission was to kill black people. And, I mean, you killed nine black people. You said earlier that you, just to recap, after a Watching the Trayvon Martin, he got upset. He started doing research. You said you could have done it in Columbia, but you chose not to. You, you picked out that particular church because of the historical right. meaning behind the church. You actually drove out to the church. There was a black lady, you said, getting into her car as you were walking by, and you found out that there was going to be a Bible study there. So you knew that there was going to be a large concentration of black people at the study. You said you went into the study. So you, you thought about this, you finally made the decision, you had your weapon, you said maybe April or so is when you got the weapon, so now you had your weapon. You said you bought two different boxes of ammunition, one at one, possibly one Walmart, one at the other, so you didn't buy it all one time, but you, over 77 rounds over time you collected. You brought that weapon with you in a bag, you said you had X amount of, and, correct me if I'm wrong, was it seven magazines? Eight, 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 eight magazines all together. All right, you went into there, you, you went into the, the Bible study, you, uh, you walked in through the door, you saw these two tables. So you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, you, drew, you, you, drew ten. you drew ten people. You sat right here at this table. You sat for about 15 minutes, could have been 20, could have been 10. And you said you just had to do it. You said, so you stood up, you said you started shooting. When you went back to the door, you, you told us that you fully anticipated after firing 77 rounds that law enforcement would have responded. You were fully anticipating that, and you said you didn't. You didn't. You kept an extra magazine, but you weren't going to use that magazine on the police. You were going to use it on yourself. But when you looked outside and you saw the police weren't there, you were kind of shocked. You said, "Wow, geez, the police aren't doing their job." You specifically parked inside the gated area. You said you got into your vehicle, you started to drive, and you said you thought of Charlotte for some reason. So you drove to Charlotte. At some point in time, you said you used your uh, your card to get twenty dollars on an ATM. And you needed more gas, and then you decided at the last second that maybe going out to Nashville might be a good idea because you had never been there before, and you got stopped by the police. But the whole reason you did this, just so I understand correctly, again, and you've already told it, I just want to make sure I, we understand you correctly, is after you never really thought about race relations until the Trayvon Martin uh, incident, you did research, and it really started to irritate you because day after day after day after day in your mind, or what you perceive from watching the news, there's black and white crime and it goes unnoticed, nobody cares, doesn't matter. And you actually quoted uh, an FBI statistic on rape. You broke it down to about two rapes, is it two rapes per day, is that what it is? Yeah, two rapes per state. Two rapes per state per day. And then that upsets you. And you basically said that when you went into the church, you had made your mind up that you had to do this. And you said it had to be black victim, it had to be black, uh, you were targeting black individuals because there's no skinhead movement anymore, there's no KK, KKK movement anymore, and your whole goal was basically to to do what? You said to kill black people, but what was the reason though? What was the reason? What would this what does this do? I guess my question is there's nine people that are dead. You said that your you said the goal was to kill black people, specific, just black because they are black, because you're sick and tired of what um, what's you know, black on white crime and no one's paying attention to that. The lack of movement with the skinhead movement, the KKK. So you said you wanted to kill black people. Now that you did, what are your thoughts? What I guess what message do you want to be told to the public? What do you, what do you want people to remember Dylan Roof for?
it's tough, right? Thinking about the, on that whole thing, you know, what we go through, but knowing, and even before, I mean, you, you knew your actions were going to kill people. You, you, you said you believe at least probably one guy, probably down. I think early on we said you said you shot four or five. You thought right. maybe you thought maybe four or five people were dead. I may be yes. misspeaking, but you you knew when you left when you were driving before you got stopped before you messed, you were under the assumption you killed four or five people, right? Yes, that's true. But your numbers were doubled. It was nine. So, I mean, you've done it. I mean, what do you think should happen to you? Well, I mean, I guess uh, I guess you're guilty. You wouldn't dispute that. You're guilty of, of killing the, the nine people. Nobody else walked in there and picked up a gun and was with you shooting those nine people or shooting people, right? It was just Dylan Roof, right? Right. Right. So there's no nobody helped you plot. There's no co-conspirator in this case. No one put you up to this. This was your plan. You schemed it. You did it, right? Right. Okay. So what? As a result, now I've done that. Someone that's, that's killed nine people. What do you What do you think? If you took black or white out of the issue, or, or let's say that say a, a, a black man walked into a church and killed nine white people, what should happen to him? You already know the answer, just tell us. I mean, I can, I can see by the look on your face, you already have a thought. So, what was your thought on that when he asked you? Well, you, you should probably die too, I guess. Well, and, and I'm not sitting there saying, oh, you, you think you should die? Because, I mean, you thought you were going to die anyway carrying out this right. this mission. But I, I guess the question I'm asking, you, you've said it. I just want to, are you guilty of this? Would you yes. consider this a crime? Yes. yes. And you're guilty. Who's saying it? I am guilty. Right. We all know I'm guilty. We want to, here's the thing. The reason why he'll say that, and he asks you to, we don't ever want to put words in your mouth. We're not going to right, we're not gonna make you it. need me to say right. it. I get it. And, 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 we, and part of what we want to know, and, and part of what we're asking these question, questions, is we want to know, is there somebody else involved? Is there somebody, you know, that that nurtures you and, got, and, and like, led you down this path? Or was this, was this just Dylan? Did Dylan just come up with this all on his own, as you said? Or is there somebody else there? That's you know recruiting, training, and getting paid, and saying, "Hey, let's go do this." You know, you know, no, like, no. I mean, it's pretty much just you know. It sounds lame, you know. I don't really like to say it, but it's pretty much just the internet, you know. Yeah. All the information is there for you. Can you, other than, other than, um, the movie that you watched, that Britain movie, we talked about American History X, which you said is not a good movie. Are there specific books that you've read about this subject matter? Books, articles, magazines, you know, authors. I've never really read any books. I haven't even read, you know, my cop or anything like that. You know. Uh, Was there anything that you read, music that you listened to, videos that you watched to help you get into the mindset to carry this out? You know, to help. You know, to here for instance, I played football. You know, back in the day, and. Prior to football games, I used to like listening to ACDC because it was uh, hard rock music to get me pumped up. We'd play it in the locker room. We'd go on the field. So I guess what I'm trying to ask you is, is there anything that you did in preparation for this to get you to the point where when you were sitting there, when you said you made that decision, I got to do this, was there anything that you did to prepare yourself so you can make, say to yourself, I got to do this and I'm going to carry this out? Is there anything you did to prepare, prepare yourself? No. But I mean, it, you know, it's pretty much like I have been preparing myself mentally. Okay, tell me about that. Without, you know, tell me about like that. that. Tell me about that. That's what I want. That's what I want to know. Tell me about the mental preparation, because what I really want to know is, like you said, you walked by the church, that lady was getting into the car, so you knew there's gonna be a large concentration of African American people, black people in that church. Those were your victims. You decided you had to kill them. You had to do it. You had to send a message. You said there was some mental preparation that you did. So I want to know a little bit about, about the mental preparation, but I also want to know when was it that you decided, I'm going to do this? Was it was it on June 16th? Was it yesterday when you woke up in the morning? Is it when you left your mom's and you said, that's it, I've had, I, I saw this thing on the news, I'm fed up, I'm going to send a message. When did you decide, I'm going to do this? I can't tell you. You can't tell me? I mean... I've been thinking about it. Right. You know All right. How long have you been thinking about it? I 
can't say. Well, was, would he go back as far as the Trayvon Martin? Because you said that's... No, it wouldn't go back that Wouldn't go back that far. That's that's what got you interested in statistics. You okay. I'm saying? I wasn't thinking about you doing anything. When did you start When did you start actually thinking about, maybe I should Maybe I should send a message myself. When did that start? But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. Was, was there anything that happened that long ago? Was like no, a movie no. or something you read or, or that said, hey, you know what? No, it was just an you know, accumulation. I mean, was, did, you know, was anything else going on beyond the trail? I mean, there's been a lot of high-profile right. incidents you know, you across the country. Other things happening too. But I just said Trayvon Martin because that was just the very that was the beginning. Right. And when you tell me, you're talking about the different incidents. I mean, I don't care about Trayvon Martin or anything like that. It's just that's just what made me start. Thinking. What are some of the other things that have happened since then that got you that got your attention? I guess. Well, you know, like the Ferguson thing. That I really didn't pay too much attention to because. By the time that happened, I'm already, you know, I'm already completely awake. You see what I'm saying? I don't, right. I don't even really need to pay attention to it anymore because I already understand it. You see what I'm saying? Understand what? Once you already understand what's going on, I don't even need to watch the news. What do you, I already know what's happening. That's what I want to. That's what I want to understand. You're saying you're completely awake and you understand right. what's it's, going on. You know, what? It's being racially aware. You know, it, that's a real thing. Racially you aware of, of what? Racially aware in, in itself. You know, that's where you view everything that happens, ever, through a racial lens. And that's what you do? Yes, you have to view everything through a racial lens, everything that happens, because that's how black people think. Black people, from the day they're born, are racially aware, but white people aren't, because we're brainwashed not to be. But I am, because... It sounds corny. No, no, say, I'm listening to what you're saying. No, no, no. no what you're saying, that sounds corny, but I guess that's the only way to put it. We understand what you're saying, but where did you learn this? I mean, I know you, you say the internet, but are there sites? I mean, what inspired you to go, I got to research this? Dylan, believe me when I tell you, you know, and, and, and Michael and I have interviewed many people and with each other, and you're an intelligent individual. And the, the bottom line is the fact that you're, you, you make maybe you're, maybe grades at a school or things like that don't reflect it, but you're, you're an intelligent person. The fact that you're able to read and comprehend and maintain specific knowledge, you know, you're, you're highly aware, I and, guess is what I'm trying to say. And, and I did want to put you, obviously, I don't think I asked that question I usually do. You said you got your DED, GED. You can read and write. Right. Yeah, because you had to. I mean, I, that's the question. I was like, well, could you read right. or not? Of course. I mean, I knew you, but you can't. You said you could. You're saying you said that black people are basically racially aware from the time they're born, but white right. people are asleep. From the day black people are born, they're viewing everything that happens to them through a racial lens. That's why they get offended so easy. Sometimes a white person might do something to a black person, and the black person will think it's racist, even when the white person wasn't even thinking about race, because the black person is viewing this is a white person, you see what I'm saying? This is a white person talking to me. They're always thinking like that. Sure. You can ask a black person, they'll probably admit it to you. You know, that's how they think, but white people don't think like that. But eventually they'll have to. You see what I'm saying? Because we're going to become a minority eventually, if nothing, you know, if nobody does anything. And, and that's what led up to, to yesterday, yesterday, correct? Yes, I guess. Is, is that what you mean by does anything? By like what you did? I mean, because I guess that's... Well, I mean, does anything, anything. You know, it doesn't well, even have to be violent. Well, that's Just what? do something. What are you looking for? Like, like, what are you looking for somebody to do? Do something. I mean, have some kind of movement, something standing up for white people. Nothing. There's nothing. You know, in Europe or America. You know what I mean? You know... Europe, that's the homeland of white people. And, and then, you know... God, it's, 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 I've never been to Europe, but like I said, I've read about it. You know, it's, it's terrible what's happening over there. I couldn't, you know, say I wanted to, you know, get away from minorities or something and move to Europe or something. <laughs> you couldn't even do that well, because well, they're there too. Well, ha- have any black people ever done anything specifically to you, other than what you see going on around you in the, in the world, the, in, in your perception of it, right? Have any, have any of them ever done anything specifically to you? Have, have, Harmed you? Or oh no, no, no! I mean, I think you know. One time, probably a black person stole something from me, but you know that wasn't a big deal. You see what I'm saying? A black person's never done anything to me personally that 
made me dislike black people right. okay. because of what they did. But it's just because yeah. I mean, I mean, because even in this church, I mean, obviously they welcomed you. Nobody, I mean, when they hand you a pamphlet and you sit down, no, I'm not even considering Well, I mean, they didn't well, tell you what do you did. Anybody say what do you want? Can we help? Did anyone say can we help you? Or did they say come on in and have a seat? What did they say? Come on, I, I, it's important for let's, me to know that. Let's be honest. I think they were very surprised that a white person was coming into their African church but, but, in right, the first but, place. But they didn't say, oh, wait. They didn't jump up and say, hey, who? Oh, what are you doing here? They handed you a brochure and said, sit down. Right. Because what, what, a black person could, could go to any white church and they do the same right. thing. Because what, what are they? What, what is race aside, what's the church about? Jesus? I mean, were you raised in the church? Or? Yes. Luther, Luther, that's a church. I mean, um, so you know, the church is really. I mean, although they're they're predominantly black churches, they're predominantly white churches, and there's people that the churches. No, I gotta go to that both white and black people go to. Right. But I've never, and I've been to plenty of black churches. No one's ever told me, "Hey, don't come in here," and they didn't tell you they welcomed you. Right. I mean, you would say they welcomed you. I mean, no, I wouldn't say they welcomed me. I said they let me sit down. Okay. So then, what, what when you walked in and someone looked, so what did somebody say to you? They just said, a "Pastor, I think somebody's here to see you," or something like that. And then he handed me a book. And did he say, sit, "Did he say sit down, young man?" I mean, I can just imagine. Yeah, in just, my mind. Yeah, I think you pulled out the chair or something like that, and then you know, see, so pulled out the chair. Right. <laughs> what was the pamphlet that he handed you? Do you recall? Yes, it was just. Uh, like verses. Okay. Or, yeah, just verses. Did you leave that there or did you take it with you? Oh, I left it. Do you remember what they were talking about or were you just so focused on getting the courage up to do what you needed to do? I think they were talking about riches or something like that. Riches or something. That's all. And at that point in time, you said you, you stood up and you said for a while you were debating, should I go? And then you said, no, I got to do this. So. If you can think back to that, what was the, uh, what was it that at that moment you decided I have to get up and I got to shoot these people? It was, it was just, you know, like I said, it was going back and forth in my mind. And sure. Actually, I just, it was just like a jerk, you know, like a, like a jerk reaction. And, and it was, it, it was basically a culmination of all the mental preparation you said you were doing over time. Yeah, I guess. You know, I mean, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't even say I was fully mentally prepared. You know, it's just I just did it. I just did it. You know, I just did it. Well, speaking about mentally prepared, and there's a couple other questions I want to ask. Are you are you on any medications? No. Did you take any medications last night before you went to the church? No. What about drugs? No. Do, do you use drugs? Sometimes. Which kinds do you? What do you use? No, I don't use drugs. What's well, okay if you do? You it's use marijuana. No, trust me. I don't, we're not worried about, you know. We're not, we're, well, I don't we're, use drugs. I don't want to talk about drugs. Okay, that's fine. But I just asked you, were, were you under the influence of drugs last night? No. Is that because you want to make sure you had a clear head? Right. Okay, see so you. But I mean, I don't use drugs that often. Anyway. Well, could, could we just ask you that, though? All right, you haven't used them often, but when you, in the past, what, what have you done in the past? It's, I mean, that's in the past, so it's no big deal, but, you know. Like what, have you, what have you tried? I know marijuana well, I mean, is legal. Obviously, I've smoked weed. Yeah. But I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to talk about okay. it. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Um, you don't have to do that. Whereas, I'm just trying to go through all this on the, the logical steps. Who, who's your, your bank card? Who do you bank with? First citizens. First citizen. Now, and, and going back to work, run me through yesterday. Did you go to work yesterday? Or did you work with your dad? Or No, I didn't go to work yesterday. What did you do? Where did you spend? Not Obviously, we know what happened last night, right? But the night before, which was? The 16th. The 16th. Where did you? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. The 16th. Where did you spend? Um, was it Tuesday night? My days were Because you woke up Wednesday Right. Morning. I think I was at my dad's house. Okay, so you spent two cents woke up Wednesday morning at your dad's house. Yes. Yes. And, and, and what, what, what did you do that day? Did 
you go anywhere with your, your no, granddad, I'm your sorry, uncle, I'm your no, to, sister? To be dad. honest, I know it seems strange, but I really am honestly trying to think about what I did. I know I went and saw a movie, but I'm trying to think about what I did before that. What movie did you go see? I went and saw Jurassic World. Is that any good? No, no. I don't really like stuff like that. I, I like, uh, like drama movies. Did you go by yourself to the movies? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What movie theater did you go to? That's where. That's where. That was on. Was that on the Tuesday or today's what? Today's Thursday. Was that on Tuesday you went to the movie or Wednesday? Was that Wednesday? Oh God. Wednesday was yesterday. Yesterday was Wednesday. Today's Thursday. Right now, today's Thursday. Yes. Yep. The best I can get because yes. Today's yes, I think I did go to it on Wednesday. All right, so it was Wednesday. So it was yesterday. Yes. So you went to the movie. Okay. When did you, uh, so you, 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 did you spend the night at your dad's on the 16th going into the 17th? Did you spend Tuesday night? Yeah. Did you spend the I night? I think so, yes. You did. Okay. So, so you, before, before you went to your dad's to spend the night, what did you do during the daytime on Tuesday? Do you remember? Daytime on Tuesday? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So you spent the night at your dad's. You woke up yesterday. Yesterday was Wednesday. Right. Okay. You woke up in the morning. Yeah. I think your dad, if I'm not mistaken, he owns a, is a construction company, your dad? Does he do car is he a carpenter or is yeah, he a construction? Like contractor. contractor. Did did you go did you go with him to a job? Yes, site? I did. That's exactly right. Now you got me remember. All right, so what did, what did you do there? I pretty much just stood there. Yeah. Your dad was working, was he estimating a job? What was he doing? No, they were working. They were working. How long were you do you remember how long you were there with him? Two hours. About two hours. Okay. So then you came home to your dad's house, correct? After work? Yes. And what happened what happened then? You know, actually now that now that you now that you got remembering that I went to work, I don't know if I went to the movie on Wednesday. I think that might have been Tuesday. All right, that's what I was kinda of trying to yeah, I was trying I'm to make because it I'm not you sure. can't do it there it's almost too many there's not enough hours in the day. All right. All right, so Tuesday movies, spend a night at your dad's, you wake yeah. up yesterday, you go to work with your dad. What do you do at the end of the work day with your father, what did you do then? That's right, I just stayed at his house. Okay. Until I left. All right. Where'd you go after you left your dad's? You went your uncles, grandparents, grandmas, moms. Do you remember where you went? Yes, I did. I went by my mom's. Yeah. What happened over there? I just talked to her and I gave her um, her camera. That's camera? At, at that point in time, have you already made up your mind that you were going to go to Charleston? Yes. You already made your mind up of that? Right. Well, that's where I was going. Right. So you already made your mind up. So when you were at your dad's, did you already have it in your mind? That, when you were at your dad's, did you already make your mind up that you were going to go to Charleston? Or did you make that mind? Yes, yeah. I think so. I think okay. so. So when you were at work with your dad, you already knew that later that day you were going to drive to Charleston? Right. But you have to realize, you know, I've thought many times that, oh, today I'm going to go to Charleston. Do. You see what I'm saying? Right. Did, did, had, you, did, had you ever actually driven down there and then backed out before? Oh, no, no. I've, I mean, I've, I've driven down to Charleston. Shop right, so but like to that, actually never, the, no, to yeah, to never did you, you ever drive past, other than the one time when you asked that lady about the Bible study, have you ever driven past that place to look at it, to look at the entrance, you know, this door goes into the no, church? actually, to be honest with you, I didn't even realize where the entrance was. Okay. I didn't even know it was on the back of the church until yesterday. So you never went there before just to see what it looked like no. before? Well, only that one, the one time. The one time. How many weeks ago was that? I'm gonna tell you. you can, okay, but you, and that's when she says the Bible studies on Wednesday nights. Yeah. But the reason you did that was because that was gonna be the place you were gonna go. Is that correct? Right. Well, that's what I was considering. Okay. You were considering. Were you considering any other places? Well, no. We're not really. It's just that was pretty much the main place. You know, I mean, I had looked up other black churches, but I had never been anywhere else except for that. What are those ones that you looked up? I mean, like I said, it's just on the website, and it's just got a list. You know, I mean, I clicked on them. 
Hmm. But I don't remember. Like, the names. were they all in Charleston? Or? Yes. Yes, they were in Charleston. And, and, and again, I know I apologize for not starting with context. Was there anything other than the fact that Charleston had been around and, and a lot of black people live in Charleston? But you know, there's black churches in Columbia. Right. I mean, in, in your dad's neighborhood, there's black churches not that far away. Mm-hmm. And but going down, was there any other with any of the events like did the Walter Scott event that happened down there? Oh that, no, 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 that had nothing. That had nothing whatsoever. It was strictly just because. It's just. Walter Scott, you're talking about that black guy that got shot by the cop, right? Mm-hmm. No, that didn't have anything to do with it. I just, I just like Charleston. That's really it. And so, and you said there was some, there was a lot of history with that particular right. yeah, church. Yeah. What was, what was the history? I'm not familiar. Oh no, I don't know any history about that church. I just know it was a historic African Methodist church. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. I don't know anything, I don't know anything so, about so it. Did. Did you pick your gun up at your mom's house on the way to Charleston? No, I had my gun. You had your gun. Did you? Did it usually stay at your dad's house or your mom's house? Or? Where's the case for the gun? Where, where, the where, where did you keep it? Like, obviously, you didn't drive around with the gun in the case. You, had, you probably had the gun, and the case was probably somewhere else. Is that right or no? The box of the. Where's box. the box? The box of the gun comes in. Okay, right now. The box is in my car. Okay. Prior to that, though, prior you to putting it in the car, think it was at my mom's house. At your mom's? Mm-hmm. Did she ever? Did she ever look in there to make sure to see if the gun was locked up properly? Did she? Did she ever make you lock the gun up or anything like that? I don't know why you're asking me that. I'm just what because before I be, before I got into law enforcement, I never had a gun. So when I got into law enforcement, I made sure that the, the box was locked up in case someone came into the house, they couldn't steal my gun. So I wanted to make sure... Right, the, well, the box was closed. Right. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. you didn't put a lock on the box or anything like that. Oh, no, I didn't have a lock on the box. Nobody else goes into my room. Did, did your mom, did she mind you having a gun in her house? Did she Did she care or that didn't bother her? No, she didn't really like it. No. Yeah, some people like guns and some, some don't, so... Right. Did, did did your dad or anybody call you and ask you where the gun was last night? No, your mom. No, they couldn't call me. Because you didn't have a call. Right. Did, your dad didn't call you at your mom's house when you got there and talked to you, or no, or your mom call your dad. Do you remember talking to any of them before you? You, I mean, I guess you went by and saw both of them before you went to church. You left your dad's house right. and you stopped at your mom's. Right. Did you tell them goodbye? Or would they have noticed anything different oh, about you? No, no, no. I didn't say goodbye. Did your dad ever ask it before uh, before you went to Charleston? Did you speak to him? Did he ever ask, "Hey, I want you to bring the gun back," or "I don't want you to. T- I want the gun." Did he Did he ask anything like that? Well, yeah, I think he did. What was the What but was I the reason? I think you guys don't really know all this. That's why you're asking. You know, not not, not necessarily, Dylan. What was the what, Why would he ask for the gun back? What would the, What would be the reason for it? Did he help? Did he help you pay for it? Did he give you money towards it? Because yeah. if someone asks for a, if, if somebody asks for something back, then they obviously have a vested interest in that object. You know what I mean? Like if I gave him Michael his water, I could take it back because I gave it to him. Right? I helped him purchase it. Why would your dad ask for the for the gun back? Well, see, I mean, the reason we're asking about your dad and the guns because I mean, there's this note. Right? Is that from your dad? I owe you good for up to $400 toward pistol and CWP permit. I love you, Dad. Based on job, I guess you've done some work for him. Happy 21st birthday. No, that was based on me having a job. Yeah, and he was glad you had the job. Mm-hmm. But So he gave you four, did he give you $400? I guess that's the question we wanted to no, I mean, it's nothing wrong with it. It's not illegal for me to give you $400 as a gift. I mean, I give my kids stuff, too. I mean. Why are you guys asking me this? You're not trying to get somebody else in trouble. Not at all. I did. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Here, here's what you have to understand. We're trying to understand. We, we really, honestly, as you said, you have a story. We're trying to get the whole story. Because you've got to understand, everyone's going to want to know, what was every piece? What does every step have? Well, we need to be able to walk out here with confidence and say, no. For that, I guarantee you, the very first question is, is there anybody else involved? That's what we're going to be asked. And we need to be able to, with confidence, say no, based on our, our interview and, uh, and, and, and talk with Dylan. 
Nobody else is involved. He acted alone. Here's why he did it. Here's what he did. So they're going to ask us these questions. That's why we asked you. I could sit there. We could speculate on what we know or what we've been told or what we don't. But until you tell us it is or it isn't, that's that's the only way we're going to know for sure. That's why we're asking you questions. Of, you know, because you you're the only person here, the only person that knows the whole story. The you. truth. The truth, right, is you. So that's why we're asking you, is to get the truth out, and so we can understand it. And really, on, honestly, I mean, you have to understand, I mean, in my mind, I've never thought about going to a black church and killing black people. And so it's hard for me to wrap my head around that. And so that's why I'm asking you these questions, you know, and we're kind of going over, over and over again, is, is to really make sure I have a good understanding, and I want to see it from your point of view. So when you say that you mentally prepared or you read things, the reason why well, the reason why I ask you, well, how did you mentally prepare? What did you read? Is that very reason that Michael brought up? Because we can't understand it unless you explain it to us. It'd be like you telling, you know, you're telling us the story as to what happened over the last 48 hours. Unless you tell us the story, all we're going to do is guess and listen to what other people may think. We, we're kind of want to go right to the source. You're the source. You're, you're the truth. So we're trying to understand that. Without you telling us, we, we just don't know. That's why. That's why we maybe ask the same question over and over again. Right. Yeah, and you know, we're not trying to to get somebody else in trouble or whatever. But if there was somebody else that was involved or somebody that put it up, put you up to, yeah, we. That's our job, right? But there was. Right. I know, and I know. Well, you've you told. That. You've explained that. So, so now we're just trying to get how we got. Because yes, you, you're correct. We have talked to your parents. I mean, obviously. I mean, <laughs> yeah. not both of us personally have not talked to each one of them. But I mean, I met your dad this morning. Um, so we know things, and we've talked to him, and we've gone through and uh, stuff. But he doesn't know. I mean, he you know why and everything else. So we just got the conversations they had and, and what he had. That's how we know about the gun, right? That you had the gun and everything and, and, and stuff. So we just want to make sure we're, we're retracing the life of Dylan Roof. You know, the last twenty-four hours. How? What got us all here? And you know, we all intersected together. And, and that's really the basis for our questions and just trying to understand that and what are, and was there, you know, because trust me, the community out there right now, they, they don't know what's going on. They don't know, I mean, if I, you know, if I were black and went to the church, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm now where is there, am I going to be attacked in church? You have to understand that. People are scared now. I mean, when things happen, right? You know, just like when 9-11 happened, the towers fell. People didn't know if a terrorist was going to fly to the plane into the building. People were scared to fly. People now don't know, hey, is this some plot? Is this some, you know? The big, the big question out there, what, you, what Michael's saying is people are saying, what happens now? What happens now? You know? I guess what would, your, what would your message be to them? You know, when they're saying, hey, what happens now? What, what, would you want, what would you want those people to know? To know? What happens now? Yeah. Well, I don't even know what happens now. Oh, right. Now. Specifically regarding you know, why you did what you did. You said you went out there because you, someone, you, someone had to do it. Right. You said you had to do it. Right. You had to kill black people because of all the crimes and atrocities being committed against white people by black people. Those were your words. Right. So now that that's been done, right. what now? That's what the people, you know, what now? Now that you right actually... Now? Yeah. And that depends on the other people. You see what I'm saying? I already did what I did. I can't say what happens now. I don't know. So, so do you, do you hope other people emulate you and, and go forward? No, I mean, and that's other thing. That. Would you want that? Was that in your thought process? If I do this and I'm successful, then other people might get the courage to do it too. You know, I wouldn't know. I don't think that was in my thought process at all. I was never thinking, oh, if I go shoot people, other people are going to go shoot people. No, not at all. I think more, you know, if I go shoot people, then it'll just cause more agitation. That's what you thought. It would cause more agitation. So, so how? So your deal. So is the is it like if to we agitate have, race relations to make it worse? So that was your, ultimately your goal was to make race relations worse, right? Right. I mean, I guess that's one of my goals. One. I guess I don't know. What does that accomplish by making it worse? Well, it causes friction, and then, you know, it could lead to a race. So, like I said, I, so you're hoping, are you hoping that 
it's basically you're hoping that white people will rise up and, and become aware through what you yes, did. Yes, and that doesn't mean they don't want white people to rise up and kill all. No, no, people. but you want them to be aware. I just want them to 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 to, to do something, you know, for themselves. You know, to, but but stop what's happening to them. They don't even know what's happening to them. And, and obviously, it, it, it doesn't the, mean you have to kill black people. Just you know, just make things better. But in your mind, making things better, right? As you said in the very beginning, going back to segregation, white people are. I mean, white people would need to be running the country, right? Yeah, sure. Right. I mean, like no, no more black presidents, no more black politicians, right? I mean, that's yeah, right. no more black presidents, sure. Yeah. You know. You don't think we do? No, I don't think we do. Right. But I don't really have an opinion okay. on Obama or anything like that. I don't really care about Obama. Okay. Well, that's and that, and cause, right, because it's not part of the deal. But, I mean, and I think that if you're saying your goal is to agitate, I mean, I guess it is, but how are we going to get things? So, you, I mean, you really don't want them to get better. You don't want people to start saying, you know what, maybe. But they I'm, won't get better unless it's agitated. There's no way. It's not possible. Doesn't work. But in, in your view, it only gets better if black people become second class citizens, it's, it's, right? I mean, really? Right? I mean, come on. I mean, because somebody has to either, in, in your world or your mind, either white people are going to become the second class citizens. But we the are people. the second class citizens. That's the problem. We already are the second class citizens. That's the problem. So you want us on equal level? Or do you want us superior? No, I'd say I'm more superior. But right now we're inferior, you know. So that's even worse than being equal. So how do we become? How do we? How do we uh, shake off the, the stigma of being inferior? I mean, how do we? How do we change that? By you know standing up for ourselves and not letting black people walk all over us. And that doesn't mean you know black on white ground. I'm just talking about just the way black people act. Just in general. If, if you, I know. I know. Michael asked you this before, and I just want to ask you this again because I'm, I'm curious. Has, you said you, you, you were, something was stolen from you at one point in time. Oh yeah, but see, that was back when I was a kid. Right. I'm talking. Has anything specific, any violent act, ever happened to you or any member of your family or a friend? A crime committed, a violent crime by a black person against anybody that you personally know, whether it be family or friends. Has that, has that ever happened? No. No. Thank God. Right. And I'm, I'm bouncing around here again because I know we asked about drugs. Well, was, we got that now. What about alcohol? You drink alcohol? Yeah, I'm just, I drink alcohol sometimes. But when's the last time you drank alcohol? You know what? I did drink a little bit of alcohol before I went in there. But it was only half of a... Uh, um, a Smirnoff thing or something. Last night, yes. Uh, like when you say half a smear, like are we talking about a pint, a yeah. fifth? Uh, it was a big one, but you know, like I wasn't, you know, even you know buzzed or anything like that. I just took a couple of swigs of a smear off vodka. Oh no 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 no! Are you talking about a wine cooler? Yeah, like a wine, wine cooler. Like one of those whatever. Right, right. Okay. Just like, just okay, so where, where did you get that? A gas station in Charleston, or. Did you use your debit card or did you pay cash? I really don't even remember buying it, but I know I had it. Did you just buy one or did you buy a six pack? Oh no, it was just one. It was just... So you had a, how many swigs would you say you had? Was like a couple gulps or just sips? Yeah, like a couple gulps, but like I said, just had, I wasn't even feeling it. You see what I'm saying? I just took it but, just because. Was that like right before you went in or was it? Mm, maybe about 15 minutes before because I was sitting on my car. Bot bottle about this size? No, no, it was a bigger bottle. Yeah. See, it was a little bit bigger anyway. And how much of it would you say, if, if this was filled, I mean, that's a full bottle, how much of it would you say you drink? If that was the bottle, if that was the bottle, how much would you say you drank of it? This much? No, yeah, that's, a, that's well, like one or two gulps. Yeah. Well, what happened to the bottle afterwards? Is it in your car? Or? I think it is still in there, but I drank the rest of it afterwards. So after? You were right. uh, so driving when you were driving? Yeah, I think so. That was yesterday? Well, no, last night driving 
Yeah. Not been shooting until right. all of last night. Yeah, but I didn't get drunk or anything like that. Okay. Well, if you if you could talk to or say anything to the victims' families, what what would you say to them? If they were like right across the table from you, you know, they want answers. I mean, and you've you've told us your answers. I mean, that that and that. I mean, the answer is a, is, a, is a why. I mean, I mean. And you've told us that, but what would you tell them? Would you be able to tell them that you, you shot their family member because of the reason you told us? No way. No. I can't say that to them. I probably couldn't even look at them. Um, your car. Uh, would you sign a consent form to allow law enforcement to search your car and retrieve that gun out? What we call it, consent. Is it still in there? Yeah, your car's been towed back. It's it's over here now. But I mean, they, you know, we want to get your permission to take the gun out of the car and to, and to search your car. I mean, it, it's your car. It's your car. I mean, someone might come in here and ask you that and say, "Hey, would you sign this consent form?" Or not? We're not asking you that right now. Present the form when that time comes. They'll give you a form because obviously, you know, they want to get the gun out. Um, and uh, I know you, you look perplexed, like, why is the gun still in there? Why haven't you already done that, right? <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm just asking you that. Is that is that something you do, or? Why am I better off if I don't? I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm going to give you no one way or the other on that. I'm not going to make any comment. It, it's, that's something totally. And you know what? Just think about that. I'm just letting you know. Think about that for now. I'm not going to be the one handling on that part. So just think about that. Then I'm going to I do want to take a couple of pictures of you real quick, and I don't know if anybody's photographed you oh. whatsoever. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to step out. But before we do that, I'm going to step out just real quick. Is there anything I can do? Okay. Now, do, now, can I ask you this? Do yeah. I have to let you take pictures of me? Legally? Well, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, you really I mean, No, do I really? Yeah, taking pictures of you. Have you ever, everybody gets them. Pictures taken. Or do I have to let you take pictures of You can let somebody else take somebody pictures. Else somebody else. Somebody else. If you don't want me to take your picture, I don't want to no, take your picture. No, you know I mean, what I mean. That's I mean, fine. You guys, do I have to let you guys have pictures of me? That won't look too good. That's not the reason why I'm taking Yeah, the that's, a, that's really not it. But, but, but anyway, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Nobody's ever really asked me that question before. Um, I mean, at some point, someone will take your picture. It'd just be easier, right. you know, if you were up and you were smiling and, 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 and stuff like this. Yeah, hang, hang on, hang on, just a second. We're not smiling, but you know what I'm saying. Hang on a second. One, one, one of the reasons is we want to be able to take a picture that shows you don't have any injuries, you didn't hurt yourself, you didn't, you know what I mean? That's just like for me to get a better understanding, I had you draw this. For people to get a better understanding, if Dylan was okay and he didn't, he didn't, when he, if he ran out of the church, he didn't trip and hurt himself, whatever. We want to be able to show that you were fine. There was no physical injuries to you. That when we spoke to you, that, that we didn't. I don't observe anything, but we like to take a picture to document it. That's pretty much the reason. Mm -hmm. I sure wish I could take a shower. Well, that, that will uh, eventually. It's going to happen. Yeah, I, I don't know when. I, I, I don't. I'm not uh, assigned to this police department, so we'll talk. I'll talk with the officers and see if they can make, get that to happen for you. I thought I was going back to Charleston. Don't know yet. Don't know. It's probably one of the reasons why you stepped down. But um, like, like getting back to the, the, the car, um, the reason he was he was asking someone may come in with a consent form. Right. You know, there's rules. You know, we have to follow rules. In order for us, you know, you have, that, that's your possession and your vehicle. I'm just asking you the same way I'm talking to you. I'm just asking for your permission to retrieve that weapon from the car. That's, that's all he meant by that. It was still loaded. We, 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 we want see. to make sure that it's safe. We want to make sure. See why you guys can't do that without my permission? I'm already guilty. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure I, you I, can. I, 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 if I say no, eventually you're going to have here, to get that. Yeah, here, here's the thing, and I don't want to get into any legal discussion about whatever. Because probably, the, ultimately, they'll probably go ahead and follow through with it, the, the way they were going to do it anyway. And that's fine. I was just asking you. Um, That'd be nice. And, you know, but, but and that's okay. But sometimes. The way the law is now, and someone else will review stuff. They'll say, "Well, you told him this, and then that suggested that." And that. So it's just easier for me to say, "Hey, if you can, they'll do it. So if not, then we'll, we'll right now just think about that. We'll do it." But I, I really do need to take a couple of pictures. Um, 
of you um, through through this, and then um, and but before we do, I'll do that after we're done. That's fine. I just uh, you've had a sandwich. You were eating in here when we came in here, right? So they fed you. Was that a Big Mac you had? Uh, no, it was a Whopper. Whopper. Burger King. Okay. Water. You've been allowed to go to the restroom. Well, I haven't been yet. Do you need to go? Sort of. Okay, well, I do too. We'll get you over there in just a minute. All right. Um, do you, I mean, they, they, it looks like the Shelby PD guys have been treating you really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been really, really great. And they've treated us really nice too. They actually gave me some food too. I, I mean, so. They're um, hungry. Uh, is there, do you have any questions of us? Yes. What do you think is going to happen to me now? I'm going to revert that back, and I'll answer you, but I'm going to revert that back first to the question I asked you earlier. What do you, what do you think should... Well, really what I meant is not really like what my sentence would be. It's more like, am I like going to like Charleston? Is there a prison in Charleston or what? Well, all right. What will happen? All right. Let me say this. place right now. Where would you like to go? Oh, anywhere? <laughs> I know. Where's that? Home. Yeah. Yeah. Mom or dad? I found my mom's. Yeah. What do you think, um, out of curiosity, what do you think your mom and dad are going to think of this? Oh, God, I don't want to think about it. All right, well, don't think about it. Who's, whose watch is that you're wearing? I know Oh, no, this is mine. It's, is that yours? Yes. I got a small wrist, so. Yeah. Now, I don't want to think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, don't That's think. Bad. Yeah, don't think about that then. You still hungry? You want any more food? No, I don't. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm going to get dinner later, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It was just like going back to what we said. We had, we had we had you initial this and sign this because we wanted to get your permission, obviously, to speak to us. But you agreed to speak to us. It's the same thing about your car. It's the only reason you brought that form about the car. So if I got one of those forms, would you read it over and give us consent? Would you give us permission to go into your car? It's the same thing as when you sign your regarding us speaking. We have to ask your permission. Sure. the SAC is in charge of the North Carolina office out here. My boss is back in South Carolina now. Um, right. They've issued a warrant for you for murder in, South, in the state of South Carolina. Okay? All right. You're about to officially, you've been detained. You won't get into the semantics of arrest versus detained, whatever. I mean, but for all intents and purposes, you're handcuffed. That's arrested, right? So that's one thing we're going to go there. But you'll be officially arrested. You're going to be transported up to a local magistrate here in North Carolina. 
They're going to tell you what you've been charged with. All right. At that point in time, they're going to give you an option. Here's the choices you have, right? And say, hey, which I think, I mean, it, do you want to, you know, you can waive what we call extradition. When you're in another state arrested, it goes back a long time under, under state charges right now, they have, you have to be extradited to go back to another state. There's two ways that happens. The first one, you say, yeah, that's me here. Take me back and let's get the court process going. If you don't waive extradition, then they put you in a local jail here. And then basically the governor of South Carolina, their office, they get apply to get what's called a governor's warrant and issue it. And then they issue, it's all done. It's issued here in North Carolina, basically saying, yeah, we've determined it's you. This, that could take a couple of months sometimes. And then they, they then take you back uh, to, to South Carolina then. And so your whole court process doesn't really start until you get back to South Carolina. So, but they'll give you, the judge will explain everything to you, tell you what you're charged with, he'll tell you that you can waive it. If you waive it, it's my understanding that SLED, you know SLED is right in South Carolina, mm -hmm. the state police who we work with, because right now everything is, is the state charge right now they put on you, this war. You know, how this is all going to break out in the end, I don't know, but right now it's state, right? They're going to then, they, they will take, if you waive, they'll take you back this afternoon. And then you'll end up going to a court, you know, down there tomorrow. And then start the whole process now. There, start the legal process. So you can either go back today. Right, but what I'm trying to figure out is, you said if I did, it, if I didn't waive it, is that right? And I stayed in North Carolina uh -huh. and go to a local jail or whatever. Uh -huh. So where would I be in Charleston or, or in South Carolina? Well, in another local jail there. You'll, you'll go to a local jail, but I have a feeling. I can't promise you this because I don't. I'm not in charge. I have a feeling they'll probably put you in a, they might put you in a separate facility for safety purposes, you know. They may say, hey, let's go ahead and transfer, set a local jail. They may make the decision, you know what, we're going to take them and put them in a, a state prison facility, a, a separate facility for security purposes, as opposed to being in the Charleston County Detention Center. So, because um, your safety is, despite everything that's happened here, we still have a job, to, a duty to protect you, right? And so, um, we want to make, you know, we got to make sure you're safe. But those decisions will be made in South Carolina. But if you don't wait, right, you'll go here, you'll go to the local, I think we're in, um, is it Cleveland County? We're in? Cleveland County. Blue. Cleveland County. You'll go to the Cleveland County Jail. And you'll sit there until, until they, uh, um, until they do, do all the orders and come back. You know, I can't give you any advice on that or whatever. That's something that you'll have to decide. The people there, the judge will explain it to you. A lot of times, um, people do waive that just to get back. Um, essentially, if we were charging on federal charges right now, we would essentially we'd scoop you up and drive you straight back because it's federal's district, so it's different. You know, we take you to a federal judge and be done, or we take you to a judge in Charlotte and drive you back after the judge saw you and had a what we call an identity hearing, et cetera, et cetera. So. It's a similar process, but their their process and with the state is the same way. It's it's essentially it just kind of goes back to the old way things used to be. So that's a decision you'll have to make. But I, I do think. Yeah, <clears throat> let me go over this with you the same way I went over with this. This is a uh, consent to search vehicle. All right, so I check vehicle right there. It says, as the person in apparent control of this vehicle, the undersigned officer would like your consent to search for evidence contraband. Or instrumentalities of a crime as described to me. We already spoke about why we were here today. You are under no obligation to give this consent, and anything found may be seized and used in evidence. You have the right to consult with an attorney before deciding whether to grant or withhold consent. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you before you give your consent. You have the right to withdraw your consent at any time and may give consent to a limited search of your vehicle. All right, so description of items, that's it. Oh, God. Now, if I don't sign this, then what happens? Does that slow me down too? No, it doesn't slow you down. But also, in addition to the car, we actually do want your clothes too. Because those are the clothes you were wearing. Understand? Then what do I put on? They'll give you some clothes. clothes. We'll give you some clothes. But we want your clothes because, I mean, there, you may not see it, but there could be blood splatter on those clothes. There could be all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And understand, even though you've just come here and readily admitted it, did everything you were, you know, you stood up as a man and said, I did this, right? You told your story. The government or in the state still has to actually prove all aspects of the case as if you never told us anything. So they're going to go through and sh do all the things. Hey, he was here, he was here, you know, and here's the blood splatter, here's this, here's that. So 
you know, you, we're going to consent, and it, you know, whether or not we can just take them or not, those are legal issues that are, again, I don't want to get into. Um, but the decision was made to either, cons you know, that, to ask you for consent on the close, um, you know, or you know, or the, the, you know, do the other. So you, that's your choice. I just can't, I can't coerce you into saying, oh, you got to give these, either give right. these or it's not going to happen. And I'm not doing it. And if you don't want to, that's fine. If you say, I, I don't want to sign consent, don't, don't sign. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just. Okay, I can't sign it. Okay. Okay. So that's fine. That's fine. I do, though, I do need to take a picture of you now. Okay. This basically concludes our formal interview. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say? Go ahead and stand up for me. Black Dickies? Stuff. Yeah, they've searched you, but I don't have anything on there. You're wearing sweatpants underneath your dick. Yes, you can check those two. Okay. What's in this front pocket right here? Uh, that stuff they take put, put back in there. The Dutch Square movie ticket thing. You went to Dutch Square on 616. So that was Tuesday, right? That's Tuesday. I actually saw that movie uh, Saturday night. Is this all the money you have left? This you didn't get from them. You just carry this, right? Or no? Mm, yeah, yeah no, that's just, I just had that in my pocket. You carry a $2 bill? Yes. How long have you had that for? You make a little Oh, no, they make yeah. You tried to draw some more money? No, that was all at the same time. But I mean, you draw two or twenty, and then you try to draw some more. Or is that no, you try to draw too much. The first time I tried to draw too much, then I did. And they have your wallet and stuff. I, mean, I don't have a wallet. 
Oh, you don't. So you don't have a driver's license with you? Is it home or? No, I should have my driver's license. It should be, it should be in my pocket with my debit card, but I guess it's not. They may, they may have grabbed it. Yeah, they might have it. Okay. Let's pull this pants in. Those are our Timberlands, right? Oh, no, no, no. These are just, uh, I just got these from Walmart. boots. In that other picture, I noticed you were wearing like some black combat boots. Oh, yeah, I just got this from Walmart. Is that kind of, is that part because that's like, like the skinhead type clothing? The Oh, no, I just here. I just got the boots. This is no reason. Oh. And, once, and I did ask you, there were no other guns at your mom's house, right? Or did you have like 22s or any other guns? Oh, or? no, 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 no. I don't have any other guns except for that one. Was this my one? I don't remember. I know that one's mine. I threw mine off, so that, yeah, that's a little bit of mine. But you know what? That's fine. I'm done. Anyway. Am I leaving now? You're about to. Okay, yes. can I use the bathroom? Oh, yeah. And of course, I just have to bind this up. Well, how about this? Do you have to go right back? Because you're not going to be riding before we're just going to go a couple blocks. Okay. We'll get we'll get out of here and we're just going to go a couple blocks over to the courthouse. Yeah. And then we'll get you situated there. You're not going to be riding for a long time right now. We're just going to go a couple blocks. Okay. All right. Are y'all done? In okay. Yes, we are done. All right. All right. This right Do you think that Roof deserves the death penalty for what he did? Thanks for watching.